What the f Hello and welcome to my channel. Have you ever done a tire rotation and found your wheels really stuck on the car? On my Mark III, I could usually just give it a couple whacks with a mallet, maybe kick it or something like that, and it would be enough to knock the wheel loose from the hub. The Mark VII, I don't know why, but it just is really sticky. And sometimes giving it a good beating with a mallet, um, it can be a little frustrating. And I've only got about a five or seven pound mallet, and so I really am whacking this thing and I don't like it. And then I recently discovered a method for breaking these wheels loose from the hubs. It is so simple, I can't believe I never thought of it before. Some of you are gonna say, well, yeah, duh. And then some of you are gonna say, wow, I never thought of that. So hopefully this will work for you. Check this out. Our obvious first steps are gonna to be to remove the hub, the lug caps. Hopefully you do know that that's what this little tool here is for. There's a little arrow right under here. That's where you want to line it up. Here's the wheel, definitely stuck, it's not going anywhere. So for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and put the lugs back on and uh, show you what my solution is. I really shouldn't call it my solution because uh, I'm not the one that thought of this. So instead of using the force of a five pound mallet or maybe 180 pounds of me, why not use a thousand pounds of the weight of the car? And so what you can do is, in, in my car, it's the back wheels that usually stick. And so if I'm going to do a rotation on both sides, I can maybe loosen the lugs on both back wheels at the same time. So I got it in to the point where it makes contact, right? I'm going to back off maybe a turn. And you'll see why in just a second. There's contact. Back it off a turn. All right, so now instead of wrestling with these wheels by hitting them with a five or seven pound mallet or maybe just 180 pounds of me, I'm going to rock the car and the lugs are only loosened just a little bit. So my goal is that they'll, just moving them that millimeter or two in there will be enough to loosen and break the bond here. So let's see if it works. Now, if you're loosening these by, uh, by hand or with a wrench instead of an impact wrench like I just did, typically you're gonna loosen them before you lift the car anyway. And so that is really what I'd be doing with these wheels. All right, this time, instead of taking the lugs all the way out, I'm gonna just loosen them a bit. Now, since these are tight, now I'm pretty sure that the wheel moved a little bit. Look at that. So that did it. It's not completely free, but it's loose enough for me to move it. See, the wheel didn't fall off, so it's not it's not quite unstuck. It's still in there pretty good. But like I said, it's loose enough to move it. It'll come off. There you go. So there's a look at the hub. You can see the rust around this ring here. And what you can do is hit this with a. Uh, um, a steel brush or aluminum bristle brush, whichever you prefer. And then you can see on the back of the wheel here, I don't think it's going to be in focus, but you know, a little bit of corrosion on the inside there. I've seen people put antices compound on these, and uh, I don't know how I feel about that. A very, very little bit, maybe on this face right here, but I, I've seen guys just smear this whole thing, the whole face, with 
with antiseize compound and it's just not necessary. In fact, that stuff will, I've heard the saying, a little goes a long way and that stuff will fan out as you're driving and just get all over everything. So uh, I'm even hesitant to put the little ring around this. Maybe just a very thin glaze around this ring right here, but that's it. I, I wouldn't go any further than that. So there you have it, that is how you remove wheels when they're stuck. It's easy, a whole lot less beating, and if you're working on the ground like I am right now, uh, beating wheels with a mallet while you're on the ground is very awkward, time-consuming, and frustrating. Just rock the car. The weight of the car will knock them loose. And look, I didn't have to lay on the ground to do this, so what's not to like about that? Here's one more tip for those of you who are new to lug bolts instead of studs. I'm so used to these things now that I'm actually better with the bolts than I am with the studs. Imagine that. So uh, if you take a look here at the hub, um, sometimes you can get lucky and line it up like here. I, I just call this 12 o'clock, right? So it's straight up and down. It doesn't get any easier to align than that. But you just look at which hole you're going to line up on and say, okay, this is 12 o'clock. Oh, there's 2.30. 3 o'clock, just make something up that you can stick with. I'm going with 12 right here. So then all I got to do is line the wheel up so that I've got this lined up at 12 o'clock. I put my foot up underneath this. Oh, and I load a lug so that it's ready to go. Load a lug bolt in the, in the driver so it's ready to go. Lift it up and hold it on. Maybe just a little bit of a twist. There you go. To get it to line up, you'll feel You'll feel the uh, the bolt drop in the hole. And once you get one on, the rest of them are pretty easy after that. So just a little tip, hopefully make somebody's life a little easier. A lot of you VW enthusiasts already know about this stuff, so I'm preaching to the choir. But uh, if this is new to you, that's how you do it. They also have these uh, alignment pegs that you can stick in there too. And they work. I, I bent one of mine because I, I dropped the wheel trying to line it up. But like I said, it's easier for me to work with the, with the uh, bolts than it is the studs. I'm better at putting it in than putting it around. It goes into better than goes on to. <laughs> that makes sense. But uh, yeah, anyway, life's a little easier when you line them up that way. This here's a pretty cool tool. Uh, Schwab and makes some similar to this and what this does is this allows me to use an impact wrench to tighten them down But it won't take them all the way down to 90 foot-pounds. It just gets them on there snug I think the Schwab and one takes it to about 70 uh, pound-feet. This one is similar and what it does If you can see I don't even know if you can see that in the camera, but it'll just stop rotating once it gets to a certain tightness go any tighter it just slips right I can do it all day long it isn't going to go anywhere so cool tool like I said then finish it up with an actual torque wrench I don't know about you, but I fasten mine down to 90 foot-pounds, pound-feet. I think the books calls for 88 or 85 or something like that, but 90 is easier to, uh, to dial in. And now that that's done, I will drive it maybe just a day or two to work and uh, check them again. I hear that's important on aftermarket wheels. It's been a really long time since I've had aftermarket wheels. So I could check these in 100 miles and they'll be fine. So maybe it's not a factor with OE wheels. I don't know. Comment if you know the answer. But I know with aftermarket wheels, they always say to check them again after 100 miles or 50 miles. Doesn't matter with OE wheels. I don't know. I do it just because I'm anal that way. My wheels are not coming off, that's for sure. But they're also not going to be over torqued. That drives me bananas. I go to the uh, BW dealer, tire places, it doesn't matter which tire place, they always over torque the crap out of them. 
and then I wind up having to break them loose and retorque them properly immediately. This is in my car if I go to a tire shop, so uh, I don't know what it is with these places. I'm babbling, so uh, thanks for being here, and uh, let me know what you think of all of this, and I will see you next time. Take care.